well, you would have lived longer, okay? But listen, if you went scuba diving and you found a treasure chest full of gold coins, and I asked you the simple question, when did the boat sink? You say, I don't know. <laughs> well, look at the dates on the coins. If there's a coin in that box from 1750, you ought to be able to figure out the boat sank after 1750. How many can figure this out with no help at all? Okay. It couldn't sink before that, could it? You don't poke around in the box and find the oldest coin. You have to find the most recent coin, and that kind of limits when the boat could have sunk. That's called the limiting factor. Did you know there are probably a hundred different ways to tell how old the Earth is? A lot of them give big numbers, a lot of them give small numbers, but it's the small ones we've got to worry about. If you find a dinosaur bone, you should notice two things about it immediately. Number one, it does not talk. Number two, it does not have a date stamped on it. It does not say, made by a dinosaur in 70 million B.C. in Taiwan. <laughs> they don't say that, okay? So how do you tell the age of a fossil? How do you tell the age of the Earth? How old is this Earth anyway? Well, the Bible dates add up to about 6,000. Textbook says it's billions. Somebody is wrong. There's a difference between 6,000 and 20 billion. Congress doesn't seem to understand the difference, but there's a difference, okay? And we'll talk about that in the next session. How do you show the earth is not billions of years old? But if it is only 6,000 years old like the Bible teaches, that raises some interesting questions. What about the dinosaurs? What about carbon dating? How did the light from the stars get here? What about Grand Canyon? Didn't that take millions of years to form? What about the geologic column? Well, folks, that's why my seminar is about 17 hours long. I am talking as fast as I can go. But we cover all that. We'll cover some more of that in just a minute.